Welcome to the Ask Coach Mac podcast, where coaches from around the world get their strength and conditioning questions answered. What's up, guys? Rama Keeper here, and welcome to episode number 19 of Ask Coach Mac. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have a great question from Brennan, but before we get to that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Iron Grip. Iron Grip is the largest provider of commercial free weight equipment worldwide and the only manufacturer with a line of exclusively American-made free weight equipment. Their equipment can be found in premier f- fitness facilities in over 60 countries, including three facilities that I've put together. They are the industry leader and my go-to choice for bars, plates, and dumbbells. For more information, go to irongrip.com, follow them on Twitter at iron underscore grip, or call Chris DeSanto at 509-230-3124. All right, here's today's question for Brennan. How do you get athletes to respond to you as a coach? Brennan, a great question. And, you know, I don't want to sound too cliche or, you know, uh, minimize this too much because it's probably one of the most important things uh, that we do as strength coaches. But getting athletes to believe in you and buy into you uh, is such an important process. And really it comes down to relationships and communication. I mean, you have to show uh, that you care. You must be perceived by the athletes as being honest and caring. Bottom line. You know, and so you gotta you gotta give your athletes a reason to want to work hard for you. You gotta take the time to develop genuine, honest, caring, and trusting relationships by you know spending time with them uh, in in lots of different ways, different formats. You know, and and so throughout my my career, uh, I've I've had plenty of opportunities where there, there's been athletes that it just seemed like they were unreachable um, or that they, you know, they just weren't responding maybe or, or buying into the program. And, and, you know, you just wear those athletes down over time by being consistent and showing that you care uh, and providing different things. I think that you got to model uh, what you want to see. You know, if, if you want someone to work hard, you better work hard. If you want somebody to put in the extra time, you better put in the extra time, you know? And, and so, uh, I think it's, you know, you, you've got to constantly be communicating uh, what you're doing on their behalf. I mean, how many of them know that you're listening to this podcast right here uh, in an attempt to try to get better for them? I mean, when I go speak at conferences, when I go, uh, you know, do a new certification or uh, find, you know, ways to better myself so that I can better my athletes, I make sure I let those athletes know about it. I, I, I make sure that they know uh, that I'm investing in. Uh, in myself for them. And I can tell you, you know, from experience that that is such an important process, but some external things that you can do uh, with your athletes to show them that you care and to, and to get them to buy into you. Uh, I think the one, the first thing is you got to create life experiences. Uh, this college time is one of the, the greatest times of their life. You know, it's, it's going to be some of the, the more formidable times where they really become who they are, you know? And so, uh, you know, I get a, 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 a gamut, the wide gamut of athletes, you know, and, you know, they've had some experiences, they've had some resources, some have not had any, you know, and so little things like last year, we took our team uh, to one of the Great Lakes, to the sand dunes on one of the Great Lakes in Warren Dunes State Park, and we camped out on the sand dunes and we, and we climbed these massive sand dunes, which were, um, it just destroyed the guy, so it was a great workout, but we also... I mean, half our football team had never even seen a great, great Lake before. You know, that was only the second time in my life that I'd seen a Great Lake, you know. And so, you know, when you provide an, an experience like that where they're, they're doing something for the first time, climbing a mountain for the first time, going whitewater rafting for the first time, doing, you know, a, a sand dune or something like that for the first time, you create these life experiences for them. A lot of times you can ask uh, a little bit more from them, you know. The second thing is I need, you need to create bonding opportunities, you know. Uh, you know, we took our team – uh, you know, we, and we jumped in, you know, we did the frozen leap the last couple of years where we're, you know, we're, we're taking a few guys and we're doing it for charity and we're jumping into, uh, Ford Lake, you know, up here in Michigan, you know, they're cutting a hole in the ice and, and the whole deal. And it's absolutely crazy. And it's absolutely something I did not want to do, but the guys that did it and myself and, and, and our staff and everybody, uh, it created a bonding opportunity. You know, created a, something that is memorable for the, for us to be able to uh, lean back on for the rest of our, our lives, you know. 
you've got to create one-on-ones. You know, you have to find times to be able to pull guys aside in different ways or uh, support different people. Um, you know, and so I, I mean, I think about, you know, times that I've driven to the Senior Bowl to watch a practice for a, an athlete that we've had there or um, go into an athlete's class to listen to their presentation or something. You know, something where they weren't expecting you to do it, but you did it and it created a one-on-one and it created a, a great opportunity to uh, to get to know the athletes more. We do a lot with special workouts. I think special workouts are again those are those are experiences and they're and they're a variety and they're different ways to to mix things up. And so uh, when they're having fun, um, again, I think they'll buy into you more and they'll want to be around more often. And I think the last thing is including your family. You know, uh, my athletes need to know that I have four kids, I have a wife. You know that it's not. You know that when I when I come in and I put in the hours, I'm I'm doing it at the at the expense of time with them, um, and so by including them, by having our my family come in to workouts or work out with the guys or get to know them, not only is it the coolest thing for my family, but it's also a cool experience for our athletes, and uh, getting getting a chance to know them and um, you know interact, and so uh, you know my 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 daughter will, will come in and she'll give nicknames to every single guy on our team and you know um you know they know the interns on our staff and, and the whole deal so it's not just limited to your athletes but i think it's um uh, it's great to try to find ways uh to get them involved so to kind of you know to summarize i think you're creating life experiences creating bonding opportunities uh create one-on-ones do special workouts you know and, and include your family uh, I think are ways that you can create buy-in. So, uh, Brennan, I hope that answers your question. Would love to hear what everyone else thinks. Use the hashtag AskCoachMac19 to continu- continue the discussion over on Twitter. Brennan, thanks for your question. I want to encourage everyone else that if you have a question that you would like to potentially be featured on the show, head over to AskCoachMac.com. There you can leave your question by hitting the record button at the bottom of the page. I appreciate you guys for listening. Here's a quote to finish off the day by an unknown Author, you either buy in or you get bought out. Take care, guys. I will see you in the next episode of Ask Coach Mac. Bye for now.